There is a story coming out of South Korea that not a lot of people are talking about. But to my mind, it's a really big deal. South Korea was initially the model, so to speak. They had flattened the curve. They had done everything right. Well, now they have 91 confirmed cases of people who were declared coronavirus-free who somehow now are reinfected. This idea of building antibodies wouldn't work in this case. Now, many would jump to the conclusion, oh, wait a minute, okay, so there are two viruses. There's the mild version, and then there's the severe version. The only problem with that is that the severe version is so much more virulent and contagious than the mild version that we would see across the globe more people getting the bad version than the mild version. And that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing about an 85-15 split the other way. I made the allegation that there are two viruses, and they're both mild, but when they combine, they become something else that is so much worse. Many have come and said, you don't know what you're talking about, that's not how viruses work. Guess what? I found a story from last year that proves this can happen and has happened. Now, who remembers? This is going to be a blast from the past. Who remembers this story? In Siberia, it was kind of a, a science thing where they um, put out the story about this wolf's head they found that had melted, come through the ice. They didn't realize how old it was. Tens of thousands of years old. It was from a very ancient species of wolf. Now, I wanted to do a video today talking about how Antarctica just had one of the most epic melting seasons they've ever had. There are islands down there that were solid ice that now have absolutely no ice happened in one season. Now, I want to read something to you about canine coronaviruses and tell me if this sounds familiar. This is right from the wiki. Pathology. The virus invades and replicates in the villi of the small intestine. Intestinal disease may be related to virus-induced apoptosis, programmed cell death, of cells of the epithelial mucosa of the small intestine. Canine coronavirus was originally thought to cause serious gastrointestinal disease, but now most cases are considered to be very mild or without symptoms. A more serious complication of canine coronavirus, pay attention, occurs when the dog is also infected with canine parvovirus. Coronavirus infection of the intestinal villi makes the cells more susceptible to the parvovirus infection. This causes a much more severe disease than either virus can separately. However, fatal intestinal disease associated with canine coronavirus without the presence of parvovirus is still occasionally reported. This is evidence that two viruses that by themselves aren't deadly, when combined, can become deadly. And that's basically what they're saying here with canine coronavirus. Could we be seeing some type of a morphology, some type of an interaction of two viruses that we didn't know about that makes the one virus, makes the combination so much more deadly, it would explain what we're seeing and why so many people think what's going on is so insane. Because we have 85% of the population getting this thing. And it's the sniffles. And it's, you know, well, maybe something more than the sniffles. It's terrible. And I believe I personally had it. And it's annoying. And it's just like the seasonal flu. And you have this nagging dry cough. Kim Iverson rep reported this as well. She was sick for a while. And she had this cough she couldn't get rid of. And then we have this other thing. That when healthy adults get it, from the time they know they've got something to the time they're in the box 
and being lowered into the hole is like two weeks. That is not what I had. At no point, at any time, did I ever feel like I needed to go to the hospital. And I've heard this over and over and over and over and over again. And the numbers are showing this over and over again. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. Now, talking about Antarctica, this is going to be kind of a two-part video. I found something else, and we've found creatures like this before that would make you think something else was the reality on that continent for a very long time than what we see now. These videos are meant for people who have the ability to think outside the box. People who have the ability to say, I know this is what we think now, but what if something was very different? Here in Florida, you see stuff like this all the time. People are very familiar with the alligator and crocodilians. This is from Georgia. They get very large. But think back to the New World the time of Columbus, the time of Menendez. During the early 1900s, these animals were hunted to near extinction. But prior to that, I'm sure there were many specimens far larger than this. Imagine the stories they would have told going back to Europe about creatures in the New World and how they would have exaggerated things. And to them, it may not have been an exaggeration. You're trudging through a swamp and all of a sudden something 18 feet long with a jaw that's 6 feet long and a head bigger than half your body comes out of the water and tries to kill you. But of course, this is what happens when money gets involved. And people want to make a buck. They did. They almost drove it to extinction. But now it's made a huge comeback. They have all sorts of different shapes and sizes, too. And I just wanted to show this picture before I show what we found in Antarctica. This is actually from Australia, and this is not Photoshop. 8.6 meters long. This bad boy. Huge. This was the first one of these we found. Some time ago. It was kind of hard to see, but you could very well make out the eye, the upper jaw, the lower jaw. And then we found what looked like, well, this is, I guess I'll show the new find first. This. Now this, you can see a lot more. And it looks like this might not be a statue. It looks like what we're seeing here, one second, let me move this over. There we go. Is something happening in real time? I don't know how you could explain this with wind, ice, rock, and snow. I mean, even from a distance. There is something very, very different going on here. And I know people are like thinking, wait a minute, it's freezing cold down there. How could these animals live? On the surface it is. But they've established now that even exploring smaller regions right at the surface, they have found tunnels that were 72, 75, 78 degrees. What would happen if you would go down even farther? Those volcanic vents mixed with the fresh water mixed with perhaps some type of ancient vegetation, there could literally be, underneath the ice down there, there could be entire ecosystems that we know nothing about. There could be animals that have adapted to this level of cold that resemble crocodilians. Life finds a way. It always does. And, you know, and I guess if you're not the kind of person that wants to imagine anything 
my videos are probably going to be kind of boring. Because it's not going to be something where you're ever going to hear the Smithsonian endorse me. You're never going to hear, you know, the Public Library of Science endorse me. You're never going to hear any government come out and say, yep, Florida Maquis was right. You have to be somebody that doesn't wait for that. You just have to be able to trust your instincts and trust your own eyes. You can go to the Florida Maki homepage and you can click on playlists and you can find the one that says Antarctica and you can look through 226 different videos where we cover in each one just about something different. If this were not what I say it was, it would be incredibly difficult to do that. To create the images. And there's really no way to create an image and then say, go download Google Earth Pro for yourself, put in the coordinates, and then have what you see resemble anything like what I see. If I was doctoring stuff, somebody would have been able to easily debunk me by now, and they haven't been able to. So the last thing I wanted to show and I was going to show earlier was this. We've covered this one before, and... Let me see if I can get it to show up. Here it is. Now, this looks more like a statue to me, honestly, that somebody created this. And this is why I think there's intelligent life down there. It's just under the ice and undetectable. I mean, undetectable in the sense that if they have found them out, nobody's talking about it. Or these creatures are just perfectly happy to leave us alone and not be involved in our society. And at this point, I don't blame them. Because one of the other untold stories of when um, Europeans came to the New World is something called the Columbian Exchange. And it was largely highlighted by death and disease. Maybe it's just as simple as that. Maybe the reason they want nothing to do with us is because we would bring something that could wipe them out. And history has shown that's not exaggerating it. That that's the case. It's happened before. And the people that were wiped out could be the descendants of these people. So I guess I'll just leave it there, but this story about the uh, this virus and how it's moving around the world. I'll give you the links to canine coronavirus, and I'll try to find a link to the story about this wolf. It really makes you wonder. It really does. If we're not seeing the interaction of two things, and they're just looking for one, like, share, subscribe.